Welcome back to our last day and last session for the Virtual Dev Developers Conference here in Mauritius. And uh, Jackie, we had uh, a really interesting session before about DevSecOps. And actually, we had uh, one yesterday too from the same company. So, what are your take uh, on this? How do you see it? Well, I mean, this this um, um, whole view of security is something that is um, most of the time still lacking in in companies, because I mean, you know, you get this this argument that. You have the software developers, they writing the code. You have the database admins that are responsible for the database and the data that it's performant. Uh, you might say, okay, you have the system administrators, they are taking care of you know patches and updates and might be responsible for security of the systems. But it's also, you know, the employee that is picking up phone calls, it goes home with the with the CEO of the company. Security is a concept that needs to be understood um, by everyone. Uh, there is need for education for everyone in this company and the principles of security need to be applied by everyone. You know, there's, there's a nice topic or since years or decades, um, you hacking a system also with social engineering you know you can call at the bank you speak their lingo you can pretend to be a bank employee and you get access to information that you're not supposed to 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 get uh, your hands on so DevSecOps okay, yeah. is the software part but there's way more to it sure so i think we we move to our next session which is on jitsi meet and how since uh, COVID-19 came and the pandemic, so everything has been moving towards digital, online conferences, online meetings. Uh, mostly, uh, most have been using Zoom, but I think that you're going to show us how we can use something open source like Jitsi and set everything up to conduct uh, conferences and, and meetings. So let me leave the floor to you and you can start your session. All right, Aditya, thank you so much for the introduction. And yes, I mean, we are um, a community. Uh, MSCC started based on the weekly uh, Code and Coffee um, gatherings, whether it was uh, La Rabica uh, at Phoenix, whether it was then Mac and Bean uh, at Bagatelle, whether it was Vida e Cafe at Bagatelle and, and other locations. Um, it started with personal get togethers. Uh, out of that, there came the demand, okay, let's do some, you know, educational aspects, uh, add them to it and let's meet on a monthly base and, and, and you know, make it more productive, not just having chit chats. And out of that, we had great gatherings and educational transfers um, at the business incubator in Iran. Uh, we we actually started at the at the side rooms at one of the restaurants at, at Bagatelle. Uh, more and more companies then joined uh, the train, the bandwagon, and offered that we could use their facilities, or, for example, Air Expand Technologies in Katerborn. Uh, uh, we have been to the Region Learning Center in Katerborn. We had been uh, in Port Louis at the co-working space and lots and lots and lots of other locations where we have been. And it went actually were pretty great that, that um, you know, we could get community members, meet, exchange, present, uh, discuss their, their experiences and also show uh, their, their examples and solutions. So this was all great until beginning of this year. Um, round about March, we had the big announcement. I mean, it was always visible beginning of December that this will be having a global impact. But then in March came the big hammer lockdown. Everybody is supposed to stay home, working from home, studying from home. Schools have been canceled. Um, public transport was uh, was on a hold and our schedule as a community 
was completely gone. It was like impossible to to go forward with um, any kind of, of gatherings, at least not in physical person. And let's, let's reflect back on the situation in March. It was also that, um, you know, service platforms that were offering um, meeting facilities um, were not free of charge. Um, if you see, for example, Zoom, okay, you can get it free of charge. But if you read the news over the past years, Zoom, <laughs> no thank you. I mean, there had been breaches, there had been problems about security, there had been issues in regards to um, encryption. Uh, latest news was that everything is routed through China. I'm nothing against Chinese people and Chinese government, but you know it, it raises concerns about what is happening to your to your personal data, to your privacy, uh, and bits and pieces. So uh, other services, Google Meet, um, as part of the G Suite suite, um, not available for free. Uh, Google only came around May, June, that they said, okay, we are offering something that everybody can offer free of charge. Microsoft Teams, same situation. So as a community um, with no straight and direct income and uh, being a team of volunteers, we had a little bit of a difficult situation about, okay, how can we continue um, our activities on a regular base? I mean, just throwing the ball back to you, Aditya, what would have you done at that situation? How did you manage actually at La Sondinelle just when the lockdown was announced? How did you handle activities in the company to talk to your colleagues? Well, uh, for the start, we had to use Zoom because Zoom was already there uh, from the beginning and it mm -hmm. provided uh, some services. But then, because again, from the privacy issues, security issues, uh, we tried to switch uh, to something open source and local. Uh, we tried Big Blue Button, and mm -hmm. I think we also we also used Hangout a bit. So uh, when the Big Blue Button uh, started to work and it was fine, after that I think Ish had set it up. I mean things were looking good and great. Okay, cool. That sounds like an interesting, uh, interesting alternative. Yeah, um, Hangouts, um, Skype, um, surely call free of charge um, options, but then they are having limited capacities. I mean, there are some features that you would need. And um, out of this, actually, I got inspired when uh, there was a tweet going around that the uh, Mauritius Internet Exchange Point, that they actually said, okay, we set up a system on our uh, mixp.org website uh, based on Jitsi Meet. And frankly, I have to say, I already had a look at Jitsi Meet in the past, like end of last year, but it was not, you know, there was no real demand or um, any kind of um, forced steps to go forward with it. And based on that tweet, on that announcement that somebody else actually set up a Jitsi system uh, on the island, I thought, okay, let's give it a shot. Uh, let's give it, let's, let's have a look and see what can be done. So um, this was actually then the, um, let's say, um, in, uh, initial starting point where I went forward and said, okay, um, there are the possibilities. Let me just have a look here and open uh, a browser window to, to, to um, go forward with, um, I think it's um, meet mxip.org, if I'm not completely mistaken. Let me check on that. So there we go. And the exchange point, the platform is still there. And if you have a look at that, um, this is more or less out of the box Jitsi Meet. Um, you see, <laughs> I was trying something that you can actually set up your own uh, meeting room. Uh, you see in my history that back in April then, it must have been just one or two days after the announcement, I tried to set up something. And the platform works. 
it's it's open source. It's it's free of charge. You can you can use uh, actually Jitsi itself. They are offering their platform as a as a service that you can use, but you are kind of limited in the way of customization. And even here, the MIX, they simply exchange the logo. Everything else that you can see here is straight away um, the standard. Uh, what uh, what uh, how M uh, how Jitsi Meet is actually looking like when you when you install it on a system. So with that, I thought, okay, we can go forward and maybe try something different. You know, for the MSCC, uh, introducing a little bit more branding. And after some hours of tinkering, this is the result how it came out. So you can see as well that. It's completely color pattern is different. I mean, it's simple cascading style sheets. Um, it uses the branding for the MSC on both sides. There are some setups, there are some settings that can be used. Uh, you can actually then log into your uh, account and connect it to certain things. There are information about um, recent events that happened in the past. So there are more activities in, uh, at the bottom. And of course, what we also did is we added the footer to say, okay, this is the MSC Meet instance that is powered by Jitsi Meet, but in the end, it's open source, a couple bit of social media, you know, the typical branding aspects, because it's also a situation for, a situation for us that not only our weekly code and coffee should uh, should have moved forward but it's also the situation that we might have monthly meetings or any other um, out of schedule meetings so to keep it nice and smooth and separated and have it running on our own infrastructure because then we know okay um, we know where the data is where the data goes and it can be configured uh, in the way that we want to have it as a community so let me quickly show you what happens is actually when you go into a room that you can specify at any name, is by default, a Jitsi system is actually open and accessible. So anybody that knows where the address is, let me, let me eventually go back to the MXIP, is that you can literally just give it a name, hit the go button, and you can start, um, having your meeting. Um, the actual problem is that, yes, of course, it needs my um, allowance, which is fun. It has, oops, <laughs> second camera. Let me move this out of the way. Uh, let me mute myself. So, um, you know, you go into, into your uh, uh, meeting room. It's open. Anybody that knows this URL can join in and you can't do anything. Yeah, you can copy this information among your peers, but there's a problem that somebody that is just fishing for information, maybe getting access to, to uh, a certain uh, email or it was leaked out because it was addressed to the wrong um, um, a pool of people uh, might have access to that. Okay, you can say, okay, we're adding a password to it, but this is only for the room, not for the server itself. And even then, when you when you stop having your meeting, you log out of the room, the room comes again available with any kind of security. So it opens literally all doors and windows. It's like you, you're opening your, your communication platform to anybody in the world that uh, can actually then use it and, and work with it. So we didn't want that to do. And uh, it's also the situation that you do not know, okay, is, you know, is the, is the remote system um, scaling properly? Do you have access all the time? Um, do you need to have access all the time? And based on this, we thought, okay, or I thought that it might be interesting to say, okay, mm, let's be a little bit more secure and take uh, some, some security aspects into consideration. And one of the differences that you now see is that actually when you try to open up a room in, in, in our platform, in our MSSC meeting, somebody has to authenticate and be around to be the host. So, I mean, let's, let's just 
use this. Uh, everybody on the stream is invited to come in. And um, I'm just logging in myself as the host. Again, you need user authentication. And there we go. I'm now logged in. It's all possible. I can reactivate my camera. Just a moment. Mm, it does not. Starting, stopping the camera. Fail to access the camera. OK. And then let's switch the camera to the second one. I hope it's not breaking down. And there we get guests. So under the circumstances that I am in, hey, hi there, <laughs> but I'm still muted. But at least uh, let me let me see if this is possible that I get my camera activated. Oh, I guess it's a show effect. That we are dealing here with. Um, yeah, OK, more people joining in. You're most welcome. You should also be able to exchange. You get the number of information who is around. Let me try that again. Oh, the pink camera, that must be Sandeep. <laughs> um, okay, let's not waste too much time on that. Another aspect as well that is really interesting in regards to our own configuration is that you can, for example, specify that anybody that joins into the call is automatically muted. You can also configure it in such a way that everybody that joins in has automatically the camera off. Um, there are other possibilities that you can change the layouts, but you also see the branding is still there. Um, you can activate features like live streaming, uh, you can activate the recording, which might not be available in the standard installation. You can pull in uh, YouTube videos to share bits and pieces. And of course, you can personalize it in such a way that you say, OK, this is you know, your account on the MSSC uh, installation of Jitsi Meet. And uh, yeah, we have a chat feature, hopefully something nice. It works. Yes, it still works. Oops. Uh, And since we, we're running this Jitsi Meet server, it's also that um, it has been used quite frequently, not only by MSSC itself in regards to the uh, virtual code and coffee meetings that are happening normally on Wednesday mornings, but it's also that other user groups here on the island actually picked up and use the infrastructure. And um, Sandeep, I mean, you and Cedric, you were using the platform for the front end uh, coders. Um, I hope you had a good experience about uh, the platform itself, uh, how certain features are working. Uh, one nice thing as well is that you can indicate, for example, that you want to raise your hand yeah, that you get this indicator that you want to say something if you're moved, uh, if, if you're muted. And these are, for example, features that you do not get uh, out of the box with Google Hangouts or with Google Meet. I'm still waiting for that. It has been announced that Google Meet might have it coming up in October, November. Uh, I think Zoom actually has it. But yeah, Sandeep, Sandeep wants to tell, say something. Come on, what, what's going on? Unmute yourself, give us a, a comment here. So I can get a visual indicator about what's going on. Screen sharing itself is also possible. I hope this is now not getting. OK, I get some audio from. Uh, uh, so let's see the screen sharing functionality. You can choose your entire screen. Uh, you can choose a specific. Um, application window or even then a tap and you see, oh, wow, we are back in the presentation and you can go forward and say, OK, what is it that you want to do and, and and things like that. So there are possibilities about uh, what what's going on. So even then, let me choose to uh, stop the sharing. And 
this should go back in a tick. Oops. To the actual uh, meeting. So this is where we are around. And uh, maybe some of the others that use the platform can can leave their comments in in the in the live chat. So. Yeah, we can pick it up. Um, what do we have? Okay. How to deal with extensions uh, when disclaimer wishes to check on your calendar and Outlook sniffing? Um, well, you can, you allow it your way. So it is actually that you go forward in your settings that um, you need, first of all, you need to um, enable. Oh, now we get camera. Okay, cool. We can try this then afterwards. Uh, if you want to go and onto the calendar, you actually need to to authenticate. Um, simple third party OAuth uh, feature. You go in with your Google account, and it behaves like any other um, extension or app that you are granting access to your Google Calendar. So this is this is the aspect. So there is no own mechanism. It, it relies on uh, standards on the internet. As a moderator, you get additional features, changing language, um, starting without video. Uh, there are default settings and host settings that you can go forward with. And let's see with the devices. Okay, now the camera is back. Um, let's try that. If we can reactivate it now. Nope, still failing. Okay. I think this is in the browser that I cannot change at the moment onto the other camera that I'm having active here. So guys, feel free in the chat. Uh, you can talk. You're not disturbing the live feed, even that I hear you on my headsets. But unmute yourself. Go ahead. Have a little bit chit chat. I just saw that Chitesh came into the room. Um, the platform is there to be used. Um, as I'm starting actually with the end result, I would like to show you now um, where it starts, where is the beginning. And leaving the, the chat room apart, um, it's also a situation that when I log out of the chat room, everybody else gets kicked out and you cannot reactivate the chat room if you are not a host. So this is a really nice feature in regards to authentication. So only if the room is active and operated by a host, you can actually join in and the meeting is ongoing. So I leave it open in the background, so nothing to worry. You can really go forward and, and discuss things. Meanwhile, I'm going into a separate um, browser instance. And yeah, I would like to show you a little bit about how um, the instance that we use for the MSSC is actually operating. And um, I was actually taking care or I took advantage of the circumstances that Google Cloud Platform uh, grants you um, some credits with um, for a period uh, of 12 months. So you can sign up with your Google account, you can log in, you can go forward, uh, create an, an um, VM instance and then um, activate the um, the installation and use the credits. So literally, you are in a good chance to run your server in infrastructure um, for free for the whole year. If you say, okay, between the meetings, you shut it down. Because quite frankly, you don't have to uh, run your, your Jitsi Meet server 24 seven, because you know, okay, we have office hours between eight in the morning and six in the evening. This is the period that I run my Jitsi server. And any time out of this period, you just say, okay, you, you shut down the machine and it's not available because nobody needs to use it. Um, you can also see that uh, the uh, configuration is uh, pretty low. Um, originally, I started it on a, on a single core with uh, then 3.75 uh, gigabyte of RAM. It was okay, we ran into capacity issues, but I think running in this constellation with two cores and a seven and a half gigabyte of RAM, we can easily run 
uh, meetings up to 20, 25 people. Um, I think uh, Sandeep, Cedric from the front encoders, they reached that numbers. Uh, and the feedback that I received was that, yeah, the platform was operating nicely. And uh, so there is no need to really go for it. But like for now, if you say, okay, you need a big room with 100 people, you might simply say, okay, you stop the machine, you edit the configuration, you give it temporarily a few more cores, you boost, the, you 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 start the machine, you boot the machine, and literally with a with a shutdown, configuration change, and reboot, um, within less than five minutes, you have a more uh, beefy uh, virtual machine, and you can host a more rooms and you can also host more users that are connected uh, to your meeting rooms. And uh, I got actually some feedback uh, from, from uh, um, people uh, around the world that were going to set up uh, their own Jitsi instances. And uh, they were like, okay, we having four core machines, six core machines, and it's quite nice to, to operate it with 40, 50 people uh, in a hosting, in a meeting room. But you might say, okay, if you have three, four, five meeting rooms at the same time, um, it, you know, it, it splits then a little bit. So if you say you have four rooms with 10, 15 people um, uh, in each room, which means you're summing it up by 60 people in total, um, you might still be good with a single server and, and go forward with that. So uh, with this, um, let's have a look eventually into um, the system itself, um, secure shelling into it. Uh, this might take a moment. Dum, dum, dum. I should have tried it earlier this morning, but I was so busy with activities. <laughs> so another question that came up. Uh, no, it seems to be good. Okay. OS login, Windows uh, Linux system. Let's see what we have. Uh, uh, you release dash A, you see it's a Debian system, stretch based. Uh, the choice of image is up to you when you when you create your virtual machine uh, in Google Cloud Platform. You can choose uh, Fedora, Red Hat, um, SUSE uh, Enterprise Linux, uh, anything or SUSE Linux Enterprise server. So anything that is available on the on the Google Cloud Platform, um, and of course you are not restricted to uh, GCP, you can also uh, activate the same infrastructure on Azure as well as on Amazon AWS, because I mean, there was throughout the day, there had been lots of contents uh, about the other cloud providers as well. Uh, having a quick look at um, the file usage, I mean, the, the system was initiated with a 10 gigabyte drive. Uh, you see the usage is low. Uh, this is mainly the operating system with a couple of extensions, so nothing to worry about this as well. And in regards to load, uh, even now that the meeting room is running, I hope we have still some guests in there. Yeah, so even then, uh, the CPU load seems to be quite nice. Um, if you activate the ones that are in the room, please activate your cameras that we might have a look and get an idea whether the load is actually going up, if you don't mind. So maybe we're giving a, a top and see what happens if there's come something coming up in regards to load. Who do you have here? Webslinger, um, Sun, uh, Shalendra, do you mind activating your cameras? No. Still a little bit of delay in the live stream, I guess. Okay, there you come. I can hear you. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, this is because we are streaming at the same time and everything. I hope that your presentation went well during the conference. And yeah, let's let's have a quick look on the on the load now that one user is active. Maybe Aditya, join us in the call as well, if you don't mind. 
So, okay, we see now that the Jitsi video bridge is getting some load. And uh, this is actually where then the uh, limitation factor is coming in that um, the video broadcasting. Oh, there is Grant from Catrebon. Great to see you. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so more users coming in, CPU load goes up. Have a little chit chat, you can exchange, you can talk actually in real time, whereas I am the one that is a little bit delayed. So let me actually activate this here on the chat because it should be possible that you can hear me while I'm talking now and you might get an echo then on the stream with the delay as was just mentioned of about six, six, seven. Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah, no? All right, all right. <laughs> okay, having some fun here playing with multiple streams. That's too fun. All right, all right. <coughs> As you see now with about five users, load is around 20%. Uh, the system, you know, keeps it clean and nice actually. Um, and funny of all is that um, with uh, you as, as a user on the system, um, you just need your browser. Uh, but on the other side, it's also very, very interesting. If you say, okay, uh, you need Jitsi infrastructure or you want to run Jitsi infrastructure uh, in your company or you know, for other uh, kind of activities, is that you can actually get an open source um, application for the desktop, uh, which is running on Linux, Mac, as well as on Windows. And you can get access to the mobile app that is running on Android and on iOS. So with that, you can actually easily then join in with your preferred device into the meeting room and you get all the professional environment and, and uh, activities that you would need in order then to run your meetings. So I just popped it up. So let me check this. Here you will see the Windows client. And uh, let's get a little bit schizophrenic. Because <laughs> even for that, I can easily then log into the system. I hope the demo goals are with me. Uh, it seems that it's not. Oh, it's the wrong room, actually. So URL is important. No, it is. It is virtual code and coffee. What does it say? doesn't like me. Let's try it again. It might be a restriction because I'm already locked in, but you never know. Anyways, uh, let's, let's grill this off. Um, yeah, still enjoy the room here if you like to have a little bit of exchange. And CPU load is pretty much manageable. And even then, if we have a look um, in the locking process in the monitoring process. I would like to show you that quickly. Is that selecting the machine? Um, okay, the last one hour is, oops, coming, coming, coming. I mean, you see as well that the CPU load overall over those two cores is just working fine. Uh, network traffic, of course, goes up as soon as the um, video camera feeds are activated. And even then network packages, disk I.O. is pretty minimal. Uh, yes, it locks the conversation, especially in regards to the chat. So this is the only configuration that I set up is that the chat itself, the last, I don't know, how many messages, I think I configured the last 50 messages, they get uh, cached and locked on the, onto the machine. So in case that you need to reconnect or that you reload your browser in order then to sort out some, some issues, that the chat still is available. So if somebody, uh, if you wants to just hit the reload button on the browser, um, you will see that you can still access previous messages in the chat. We can't activate because Skype is already using it. Oh, okay, you have only one camera, I have two, so <laughs> sorry for that. Okay, but even then, um, the system behaves 
pretty nicely um, on, on the virtual machine and you don't need much resources uh, in order then to operate it. Uh, this is also then a cost factor because again, um, okay, there's a double sound. Of course, you hear me in the chat here on mid on Jitsi because I'm not muted. And then at, uh, at about five seconds lag, you're gonna hear me on the YouTube. Uh, a channel on the live stream. So when I mute myself here, you can't hear me now, I'm talking, but you might hear it then in about five, six seconds. Um, oh, you got no sound on your side. If you hit the refresh button, it should connect easily up. And so yeah, overall, this is in general how you could set it up. Um, on a Linux system, there are predefined packages that you can actually uh, use in order then to set up the system. If you are interested to, to go forward with, with this kind of um, setup that it could be interesting for your um, company internal infrastructure, or if you say no, it is just for my um, you know family activities that I wanna have a private uh, possibility, you know, to, to just, you know, tell my 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 mother, my auntie, my sister, my brother. Hey, if you want to chat, just fire up here. Take the browser, and we can have a meeting room, and we can have a nice group uh, get together among family. Or if you have a, a group of interest, like the MSSC, like the front end coders, like the Linux user group, this infrastructure can also be used, and. Um, uh, authentication is actually based on open source standards. Under the hood, it uses uh, XMPP protocol. So which means that with any kind of um, XMPP client like uh, Pigeon uh, uh, and so on, you can also hook up to the system in order then to change your profile settings, maybe also um, change your password and activities like that. So. We are um, quite at the end of, of the hour. Um, what else could I show you? Yes, um, starting point. Um, Jitsi Meet is everything is on GitHub. Uh, you can actually clone um, the repository uh, from the the Jitsi uh, GitHub repository, um, of course they also uh, prepackaged uh, pre uh, uh, release uh, uh, packages um, that you can uh, run in the Linux uh, distribution that, that you that you prefer, whether it is Debian, Ubuntu, um, Fedora, CentOS. That's completely up to you. There are all kind of packages available. I'm just minimizing that back again. And even now, yeah, I mean, um, I can show you some some pictures actually from the front encoders where over the period of two hours for the meeting, um, the peak with 20 people was kind of around 80% CPU load. And um, yeah, again, if you're done with your meeting, you just hit the shutdown button, you you um, you stop the machine, and as it is cloud computing, you pay as you go, which means the machine is not running, it doesn't cost you a single cent. And with the credits that are available on the different platforms, I think you can actually um, take advantage of that and um, run your own infrastructure, your own meeting infrastructure uh, on a dime for the, for the whole year. Um, and if you're not sure how to start out of the repositories, um, a lot of documentation is actually among the issues in the wiki of the of the GitHub repository. Now I'm just doing a blunt uh, advertising stunt for me. So what you can do is as well, you can go look for Jitsi, search for it on my personal blog. And there are at the moment two articles. One of them is uh, in regards to the installation. And when you're done with those steps, it's about how to uh, introduce security and authentication in your system. And uh, let this just run and load in the background. Every single step is really explained into the details. Um, one of the major considerations is that you should 
have a domain name because if you are working uh, with IP addresses on cloud, they can be dynamic, even though that you can put them on static. Static IP addresses are not free of charge. So you might even consider then using a dynamic DNS service so that you get actually then a DNS name for free again and combine it. And you can just go forward with the whole single steps of the installation itself. There are also um, some information regarding pitfalls, some recommendations, uh, about what you should do, um, firewall settings that are important, um, and everything is literally on my blog article and described. So I really uh, encourage you to come have a look here uh, if you want to go forward with this kind of installation. Uh, problematic regarding root user or not root user, uh, and it's really a lot of stuff in details, also then the aspects about activating security. Again, it uses the free of charge available Let's Encrypt um, SSL certificates, so you don't have to worry about um, all these kind of aspects. You can really go forward with it and, and bits and pieces. So what I would like to show you at the end is actually that there had been a nice comment. I hope this Gus is loading. Um, no, it's not because I activated a uh, pie hole on my network. <laughs> but, oh, no, there. And I mean, I found it pretty interesting that somebody actually from, from Germany uh, was then saying, okay, uh, we are interested to run this uh, in our school infrastructure. So primary school. And they came up with this, and it was then a recommendation about bits and pieces about what you can do. And this, here you see actually the graphic from a front end coder meeting. And then over the period of one and a half hours, it hardly reached the 80% running on those two cores. Yeah. Oh, somebody from Egypt joined the chat. Most welcome. <laughs> okay. I think we are good. We are at the end of my presentation. Um, I'm just sharing the link, if you don't mind, in the live chat that you could um, have a closer look into it. And my initial attempt to set it up uh, took about less than two hours. So really from knowing nothing about Jitsi um, to get it operational without the uh, authentication part on Google Cloud Platform, roughly two hours. Nowadays, with the knowledge that I gained and a little bit more practice, I would say this can be easily provisioned in less than 10 minutes. And I mean, if you use any kind of um, orchestration uh, systems like Terraform, uh, it might be even a matter of, of, of a minute or maybe two. And with that, I'm switching back and getting Aditya in the conversation. So Aditya, what do you think? Could this be an alternative or an interesting option for La Sentinelle, LSL Digital? Yeah, yeah, it's a really interesting option. Actually, uh, I will try. I have tried setting it up in my look. I have a local server here at home. Mm -hmm. I've tried setting it up, but the problem that I had is Docker because actually I have already have Plex server and that kind of things running on Docker, and I would really like to make Jitsi work on Docker. And that was a roadblock for me. That is a great argument because uh, Jitsi Meet is available as a Docker image and you find it on the GitHub repositories. So if you want to really try it on your local machine and you insist on using Docker, uh, have a look. There is a predefined image with the latest release of Jitsi Meet as a Docker image that you can pull down and fire it up. And um, the keyword Docker, thank you that you mentioned it, is yeah. also very important in regards that if you want to scale your system, um, if you need a more a stronger or a more uh, elastic installation, like for the company or for a school or for an organization, um, you can actually reach out and then uh, run your, your Docker or even a Kubernetes cluster um, for your Jitsi Meet installation. Everything is possible and it's just on my side 
I found it oversized. You don't need to um, kill a fly with 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 a, with a shotgun, um, and so therefore I did not look into the into the Docker Kubernetes options because running on 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 a virtual machine was perfectly fine for the needs of the MSC communities and other communities here on the island. Yeah. Actually, we have, I have a question actually from Chitesh. He a private messaged me this. He wanted mm -hmm. to know if uh, GTC has some kind of P2P or end-to-end -end encryption built in. Absolutely, yes. Um, encryption is, is there out of the box uh, because it's also based on open protocols. And um, let me just switch this back quickly. Um, your starting point could be um, jitsi.org. Yep, let me switch that back onto the screen. So there we go. And with that is that in the documentation, you get all the information about Jitsi itself. You get the option to download uh, the different systems, even in the App Store, Play Store, uh, bits and pieces. And end-to-end -end encryption is actually there. Yes, this is what it should look yeah. like. It's built in. There are so many features because with our previous session about, you know, DevSecOps, um, code security is actually that Jitsi Meet has security and privacy in mind. Um, it, it is operating on, on XMPP protocol. Um, it is it, really, I mean, and you can run it on your own infrastructure. So you actually also have then control uh, over what is happening with the locking data. Uh, if you are having concerns in regards to Data Protection Act or GDPR uh, regulations and things like that. So it is really, it's, it's to my opinion, it's complete that there are different aspects in. And you, have, you might even have a look in the, in the FAQ on, on the Jitsi website, but yeah, uh, encryption, authentication, everything is there where you would expect it. So, yes. Cool. Thank you very much, Jockey, for this informative session. And I think that more of us will use Jitsi, even the MIXP MI one. Uh, yep. I tried it. Uh, the really good thing about it, I think it is a local ex uh, installation. The lag was barely, there barely even existed a lag. So. Exactly. The the big advantage with the MIXP is that actually it is here in Mauritius. It is at the data center, I think, from Mauritius Telecom, where the the, MI, the MIXP is hosted. Um, and if I'm not completely mistaken, uh, all the service providers, Mauritius Telecom, Amtel, Chile, and so on, they are connected to the MIXP. So if you use that platform, that is running on the island, yeah, you, exactly. get, you have no latency or lag issues. I think it should be uh, on the regular, maybe five, five to 10 milliseconds, even less um, to, to use the platform. And I mean, this is also why I really, um, um, I'm happy that the MX EP is actually running uh, a Jitsi installation. Um, as I said at the beginning, uh, for for the community, is that I didn't like the, the the circumstances about for the community to run an open system that could be used by each and everyone. Because I still uh, had this idea: okay, at least hosts should be present and. Um, there should be no abuse of the infrastructure of the hardware that is provided. Yeah. And the other aspect, with activating passwords and having host presence, you can actually avoid Zoom bombing um, <laughs> so that anybody is just barging in into your chat rooms with hundreds of users and killing the meeting. So you have it literally at your own hands uh, how you want to uh, run your meetings. Yeah, sure. Well, thank you very much, Yuki. I think we can, con can conclude this session mm -hmm. and move back to hosting. <laughs> yeah, I guess we are thick because uh, yeah. quick, quick uh, break on my side, and then we're going into the long-awaited and 
for me, um, long uh, anticipated um, closing <laughs> ceremony, it was a ride. But more on that after the break. See you soon. Yeah.